Hi everybody, this is Meredith from the Paper Craftery, and I have a new guest today. The little one is gone, so the big one is here joining me <laughs> on the new project today. Brand new project, we've never done this before. It's going to be a quilled beehive with little tiny bees. And this is a project I actually, I've never done a tutorial on it, I should say, but I did sell it in my Etsy shop for a little while, way back when. And so today I'm gonna to show you how to do it on your own. And this is a great project because we're gonna use a little bit of on edge quilling. We're gonna be using a little bit of negative space. So that means not adding paper everywhere, just giving the illusion that it's filled with other types of paper. So this is gonna be a fun one. For supplies, I am going to share my hand-drawn template that'll have a link down below in the description box. For the outside edges of the beehive, I'm going to be using tan from Craft Harbor. For the inside of the beehive, I'm going to be using this ivory paper, also Craft Harbor. And then for the little bumblebees, I am going to be using deep yellow from Quilled Creations, also Craft Harbor's black, any black will do. And then I'm also going to be using some white, and these are all 1 8 inch wide paper. So after you print out your template and cut it to size, you can go ahead and put that on a work board, cork board. Uh, a tip, if you don't have a cork board, a heavy piece of corrugated cardboard will do as well. It won't last as long, but it will definitely do in a pitch. So just a tip out there. If you have a lot of projects going, you've run out of boards, or if you haven't just invested in one yet, go ahead and use a thick piece of cardboard. So after you get your template, you can put that down on your work board. You're going to want to cover that with a piece of wax paper, and that's going to prevent your quilling from sticking to it as you work. You're also going to need some straight pins. You're going to need those to hold down your template, but also this is one of those projects where you really probably will need pins as you go. Um, I'm going to be using them on my edge work and also just to keep some things in place later. So pins will come in handy for this project. I'm also just using regular white glue. I'm using a needle tool and a pair of quilling tweezers. So for the outside edge of this beehive, I'm going to be using a double thickness of that tan quilling paper. I'm not gonna demonstrate how to do that again. I will link down below to videos and also a written post about how I do that in depth, but I've just, I've talked about it for the last couple of videos in depth and I, I don't wanna have to have everybody sit through that again. So I'm going to start with the top piece of the beehive and I found it easy to sort of use my fingernails, curl it, the paper like a ribbon almost, it just makes it a little bit more flexible to work with. So I'm going to start with one spot, and that's sort of just an anchor point, a little bit of glue, and start using my fingers. And I'm also going to start with some pins to keep the edge in place. So you can see there I'm doing a couple of dots around the shape, and then I'm going to be using some pins and my hands just to keep that paper in place as I work. I'm speeding this video up a little bit here and there, just so it's not an hour long, but you can see I'm not being super exact with where the glue is going. I'm not being super exact with where the pins are going. I'm just going for a basic idea of where that line is. If you have a paintbrush handy, that would be nice just to get rid of any extra glue that you can see around your paper. And then I'm just going to tear the end. I did pull out my scissors because I wasn't sure if I'm going to be able to get in there and, and tear it. Tearing is preferred, but if you have to use scissors just to snip, 
because you can't uh, get your hands in there or you're afraid you're going to mess it up. It's not that big of a deal when you're doing something like this if you use scissors. So sorry, my hands ran away there, but what I'm doing is just I put a little bit of glue on the edge and I'm just kind of using my hands to get that all lined up. I have also in the past, there, there we go, used tweezers to hold endings in place just for a second. And that'll help seal that a little bit of pin, just to make sure. And then we're going to move on to the next ring. So when you're ready to do the second ring, I like to bend the paper just a little bit. That gives it something to grab onto from the piece on top of that, if you can see that there. And then I'll put a little bit of glue on that end and then do the next ring the same way. A little bit of glue and some pins to keep everything in place. When you get to the end of that second row, you're going to want to tear a little bit longer than where you think it's going to end. So it has just a little bit of an extra piece on there. Put some glue, as you can see, I'm putting glue on the, the one above it. And then I'm sort of going to use my needle tool to push the end inside and then pull it back out again. So it lines right up against the edge of that one. You can see it's not exactly with the template, but once you take it off, you're not gonna see that where the line was. So it's okay if it doesn't look exactly like the drawing. Again, this is just a hand drawing. This is just a guide. So I just kind of push it in with my needle tool and then pull it back out. So you can see that tail is lying against the one above it, using some pins to get it to lay straight and then you can move on to the to the next row. For the third row of the beehive, I did it the same way as the one before, but I went over the top of the opening only, just that one arc. And then next I'm gonna do the one side of the bottom and then I'm gonna fill in the other side with two different pieces. So you'll see what I mean once I get started. But first I'm gonna work on that, that left side there. Again, a little bit of a, a bend to get it started, give it something to grab onto. And then I'll use my pins and some glue to work my way around. So like I said, I'm only doing one half of this bottom part at a time. And so I just tear the end so it's going to reach up to where the opening starts. And I tore it off to make sure it was long enough, use some glue, use some pins. And now I'm going to start on the other side of that opening and then continue on the other half of the beehive in the same way.
And then for the final part of the outside of this beehive, I'm just going to be using the tan to make sort of an S shape with my fingers because that will mimic that last piece of the, uh, the beehive. So I sort of get it to what I think makes sense. And then I'm going to use my fingers and some glue, just like always, to kind of get it into place where I need it to be. I know it's sort of hard to see exactly what you're looking at on here with all the pins in a way, but if I hold it up in that way, you can sort of see, imagine the pins aren't there, what your outside of your beehive should look like. For the last part with this tan paper, I'm going to be tearing little strips that will lay across that part of the opening what it's going to do if you lay a bunch of them down next to each other, it's going to give the illusion that this beehive is three dimensional, that it's got some thickness to the wall there. That's why I drew the entrance like that. So you can see how I'm holding it there. Just tore a little strip, kind of used my eyes to guess how long it was going to be. And I'm going to lay them across one after the other to, uh, again, just to give some depth to the beehive. To put your glue on here on these little tiny strips, you can use your bottle to add some from end to end, or you can also just dip each side into it while you hold it with your tweezers. I find that's usually the easiest way with these little tiny papers. And this is what it looks like when I have all my little pieces in. You can see I didn't jam them in there. They're all spaced apart. Again, it's just to give the illusion of a little bit of depth in that beehive. Now we're going to go on to the bees. I've already made the two on the top. And I'm going to demonstrate how to do the one inside the beehive. And this is the only part of this project that really involves any, um, any measuring. We're going to be measuring three different parts for the body, the head, the wings, and then there's an antenna and a little stinger in the back. So I'm going to rattle off these numbers, but I will link to the blog post where 
you're going to get that template again. That's where you're going to find these measurements written down on the blog post with the template. I'll link to that down below. So first we're going to do the body and we're going to do about one and a half inches. Again, this is not an exact thing. If you want to do a little bit bigger, just trying to get it more or less the right size. So it's about one and a half inches, a simple coil on my needle tool. And I'm going to let that open up again, just a little bit and then glue the tail down to keep that coil in place. And then once that's secure, I'm going to be making sort of just a crescent shape. I pinch one side and then pinch the other and then sort of push it into the center. Whoops. Your needle tool is helpful for this. Kind of make it so it looks like a crescent moon there. The hardest part is that this is so tiny. But you can see it there, sort of little crescent shape. And that's going to be the back part of the bumblebee. Next, we're going to do the middle section of the body. And that's another one and a half inch. Same exact thing. We're going to coil it up. We're going to glue the end. And then we're going to make it into another kind of a shallow crescent shape. And this is the third and final part of the body of the bumblebee. This is another one and a half inch. We're going to roll it just like before, turn it into a coil, but instead of pinching it, we're just going to leave it as is just a, just a loose coil. And that's going to be the third part of the body. And this is going to be for the head of the bumblebee. And you guessed it, one and a half inches. Again, same thing, another coil, just like we made that last yellow piece. Roll it up, glue the end, and that's gonna be the bumblebee head. Next, we're going to be making both of the wings. We're going to do it separately. Also, these are one and a half inches. This is a white paper, obviously. And this is going to be rolled into a coil, glued, and then formed into a teardrop. And a teardrop is made by just pinching one end of the coil. So we're going to make two of those same exact size. And now I'm going to be making the antennas and the, the stinger. So what I'm doing is I got about, I think that was about uh, a half an inch, three quarter of an inch piece of paper. This one doesn't really matter as far as measuring goes, because we're going to end up breaking this into pieces. 
the most important thing is you take a little bit of black paper and you tear it, uh, you fold it in half to make it a little bit thicker. And what I ended up doing for this piece is I'm going to cut a little bit off, just a tiny little section for the stinger, and then fold the other piece in half to make a V shape. And that's going to be the antenna. Now I'm going to show you how to put together your bumblebee. I'm speeding this up quite a bit, just again, just to make this video a little bit shorter. So you're going to need some pins, you're going to need your glue, tweezers would help. You're going to start with the back of the, um, the bee. And just a little, a little tip here, sometimes I like to put my pin right in the center of my shapes just to really keep them anchored in place. So starting there, again, it doesn't fit exactly in the template, that's okay. This is all just, again, I hand drew the template. This wasn't an exact science sort of thing. So I put the yellow crescent down first, then the black crescent, and then last is the yellow coil. Guide that into place and pin everything nice and tight together. Then I'll add on the head of the bumblebee. And if you need to move things around, you should be able to do that. If you need to push everything closer together, sometimes I like to use pins in the corners of my crescents just to really help them wrap around the shape in front of them. You can do that too. I wanted to turn the board so you could really see when I add on the wings. A little bit of glue on the back. Those placed. My tweezers are really helpful. And then you can go ahead and pin your, or sorry, glue your, your antenna and your stinger in place too. To fill in the inside of the beehive, I'm going to be using ivory paper and I'm going to sort of be going from the edges towards the middle with different size scrolls and some straight pieces, but not filling up the entire page. I'm going to be using a lot of negative space just to give the impression of a filled space in the beehive, but I don't want it to look too heavy. So this is just an example of what I do to fill in the inside. I make a scroll, which is like an open ended coil, really loose. Sometimes I'll curl the ends. Sometimes I'll leave them a little bit straighter, but I can, you can see I'm just running my needle tool down the end to give some life to the other end. And then I go in from one side and just kind of play around with it. I'm trying just to keep this, like I said, open, not a lot of paper filling up the page. I'll use some pins. I will test some things out. But like I said, this is all about being creative this part. There's no real rules to this. I just wanted you to see how I fill mine in. But this part, you can kind of just play and experiment and have fun. When you're happy with your scrolls, 
Go ahead and add some glue to the end wherever they meet the beehive and keep filling in from there. You could wait until you were totally had all your pieces in like a puzzle and then glue them all at once, but things tend to move around. Whoops. Things tend to move around pretty quickly when you're quilling. So sometimes you can just have to just have to glue while you go as well. In addition to the scrolls, I like to use some straighter pieces. This is going to fill in some space and keep it looking a little bit less busy. And it's also going to help anchor your scrolls to the sides a little bit more, make the whole piece a bit more secure than just having a few scrolls here and there. The final detail that I add to the inside of the beehives is a few tiny tight coils. I also call these pegs. These are between one and two inch strips of paper that are rolled all the way on your tool and glued before they open. And these can begin, again be used to stabilize space between your pieces if you let them touch um, a couple of strips or you can put it, you can see there I thought maybe I'd put that one where there's nothing and that can just add some detail without putting a whole bunch of extra strips in. Continue filling in your beehive, working from the outer edges to the middle, filling them up as much or as little as you'd like. But don't forget to add some stabilizing straight pieces and even a few of those pegs just to make everything a little bit more secure. One note when you're working on the level with the bee, you'll want to make sure that in order to keep the bee as part of the quilling, you want to make sure that you do connect them to one of the swirls or straight pieces, however you are designing yours. You want to make sure that some of the ivory paper does end up glued to a part of the bee or else he's just going to fall out when you remove your, your quilling from your backboard and it might be hard to get him exactly back where he was in the quilling. So I'm gonna make sure that I have at least one piece, probably more, that are gonna to connect to the bee so that everything stays together.
when you have all of your quilling complete and all of the glue is dry, you can remove your pins and then using a needle tool, gently rub around the underside of your quilling to remove it from the wax paper. You might have a couple of pieces if they weren't glued exactly right, come apart here or there, but you can always, you can always touch that up. That's not a big deal. So don't panic if one of your ivory pieces pop out or, or something happens that can all be fixed. Just be careful. You can see it's going to start to move a little bit as everything starts to disconnect. Just gently ease your tool under there. I like to turn it as I go because it's only, only reached so much as from one side. Oh, there it is. So now it's ready. And you can see that that little bee on the inside stays attached because I made sure that I connected it with some of the ivory. When you remove your quilling from your wax paper, you will notice a little bit of glue residue on the underside. I'd like to snip that off with some tiny scissors. If you're really concerned about that, make sure you are using as little glue as possible. And also you could use a small brush as every time you glue, make sure there's nothing around the edges that will really help with a little bit less of a mess underneath your, your quilling. But again, if you just snip very carefully at the sides of these little glue pieces, they'll pop right off for the most part. There you go. And you won't see them once you mount this on a board. I usually just worry about the real big ones like that one there. I will link down below to a blog post that I have written about exactly how I mount my quilling and on what type of boards. And that'll answer any questions about how to put these on a piece of mat board. And you can then put that inside of a frame and it makes a really nice gift. So that is it for the beehive with the little bees. I hope you liked that one. I am a big fan of bees, so this is, this is near to my heart. As always, if you have any comments or questions, don't forget to put those down below. Like and subscribe so you don't miss anything. I hope that our, our channel hits over one, I hope that this video hits over 1,000 likes. That would be crazy. We would love 1,000 likes. And 1 million subscribers. 1 million subscribers would blow my mind. So, if you can help with that, go ahead and do that. In the meantime, we will see you later. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>